Well, happy Lord's Day to you. So glad you guys are here with me. It's a good Lord's Day. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea and billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole was nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Man, don't you just love that, um, that third verse? My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not the part, not in part, but the whole, all of my sin is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord on my soul. If that doesn't make your soul sing, nothing will. Nothing will. I'm excited about um, today and about what God is uh, doing in our midst, even right now. Excuse me if I get a little sound here. There it is. Uh, Strider. Jess, nice to have you. Uh, for those of you who are with me, it's going to be an interesting ride here in the next little bit because I'm going to be listening to a band that honestly is brand new to me. Um, hey, let me just start by saying I'm an old school metalhead. And, uh, uh, you know, just like um, maybe a young uh, metalhead today may not be as familiar maybe with some of the bands I grew up with. I'm certainly not as familiar with some of the bands that... Uh, folks are listening to now in certain genres. I mean, metal is so much more eclectic now and has so many other um, uh, sub-genres, if you will, than, than existed back in my day. You know, the most extreme uh, Christian metal back uh, when I was a young man was Believer and Tourniquet, and if you, you had some crossover with The Crucified, and then, of course, Vengeance Rising and Deliverance and all that stuff, and it was extreme, but comparatively, right, it opened the doors, the floodgates, for some other stuff. And uh, I certainly did not, my, my musical taste didn't continue to grow into some of these other arenas known as, like, black metal and death metal. And honestly, I'll just tell you straight out, guys, that uh, um, I don't know uh, what makes something black metal as opposed to death metal as opposed to something else. 
Uh, but I do know uh, that I have friends and brothers and sisters in the Lord that certainly could help refine my understanding of these things. Nevertheless, a few weeks back, I had asked for some input on songs to, um, to react to, and I'm not going to re- do reactions every week, but I thought I'd do one this week, and my heart was drawn to a song uh, that Andreas Larson had, had suggested by a band called Grave. Um, uh, make sure I get this right. These guys are called Grave De- a Declaration, and they've got a song called Change of Heart. And uh, I did want to uh, listen to that song, react to it, uh, so we'll lo- listen to the music first and get my initial reactions to what I'm hearing. And then um, we're going to dissect the lyrics a little bit and see what uh, the Lord has for us in that. So I hope you guys are, are uh, excited to go um, uh, along for the ride with me. George is on with us. It's been a long time, dude. I'm glad that you're with us. George, so glad to see you. I don't know um, why, but I'm always touched to tears. Okay. So, you know, dude, I... I'm so glad that, that you've joined us, and I'm glad that if we can worship together, that the Lord's using that in some, even a small way in your life, because he's certainly using it in a big way in mine. So um, he's also given me a great uh, opportunity for some creative outlet here. So I'm go- I got this, this guy um, who's ghosted in front of me a little bit here. This is off the album, I believe, that this song, Change of Heart, is on. And so without further ado, I'm going to listen to this song with you guys. I may stop and make comments along the way, by the way, and, and uh, um, forgive me when I do that because uh, I, sometimes I got stuff that I just want to react to right away. Okay, can I say right now, it's already starting like really gothic. I'm like thinking, okay, and I know the front of the album cover, at least the art that I've seen, it looks like they're in an old gothic church. That's what it feels like. I feel like I'm, uh, it's almost like a funeral march or something here. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, it's almost like the death march from (laughs) Star Wars. That's awesome. It's very dark, but also has a a very deep emotion um, that it's already building. Okay. I like that. Change of heart. There must be some keyboard there too that's going in. I love it. Oh, I love it. That's awesome, actually. We're going to talk about that. Ooh, this is good. I like how it goes into this other tempo change. I also really like how it goes from the uh, from the screams into more of a melodic. Um, uh, back and forth in the, uh, I, I'm assuming that's really considered the chorus right there. And so there's kind of this juxtaposition between the screams and then the, um, um, the this more melodic singing. I really like that. And I'm, I'm watching the lyric video as I listen to this, so I'm already seeing some things I want to react to in, in terms of the lyrics. Huh. 
Whoa, I like that. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, this is good. Very epic right here. I love this. It's building and building. Great guitar work here. This is good, right here. Strength be found in my weakness, because your spirit lives within me. <laughs> Redefine me, starting me up. A change of heart. Inspire me, sanctify me, make me your sweet piece of art. Wow. So that really hits you in your face. So that, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Let me get back on. I don't know if people have been commenting while um, we've been doing this. Okay. Let me see. I'm just going to back up here and see how people are doing here. Oh, hey, David. Great to have you. God help me through tough last three weeks of sickness. Oh, I'm so glad, George, that you're, um, that you're feeling a bit better. Didn't know that you were not feeling that great over the last three weeks. So really, really glad for that and thankful to the Lord for that. Um, great band. Well, this is my first introduction to uh, Grave Declarations. So if this is my entry point, I'm going to definitely listen to some more. Uh, not, uh, not because I am like the consummate um, black metal guy, death metal guy. Again, correct me here. For, hey, this is something you guys can do for me in the comments. What I just listened to is that is that in the genre of black metal or death metal? Maybe you guys can help me refine my thoughts on that. <laughs> All right. That being said, um, I really like the, the gothic nature of it. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm thinking, based on my limited exposure to this genre, that, that, that there's a lot of that, that this is pervasive. Um, but, but there's a melody uh, underlying all of it. But I like the tempo changes. I like the juxtaposition and the vocals. And I also like that it's taking you on this roller coaster of emotion all the way through. 
um, to the very end. And there's some things that are duplicative, right, where it's kind of going in a cycle a little bit, not unlike a roller coaster. So there's you know certain ups and downs and stuff that you can almost expect uh, within the song. But then there's some things that are happening in there that maybe you weren't expecting that really kind of makes you stop for a second and grabs you your attention as you're thinking through what it is. Now, the one thing I can tell you is really I've always appreciated about whether it be thrash um, or... Uh, even some speed metal, but thrash in particular, and then going into this genre of music is that honestly, on first blush when you're listening to the song, many times you don't know exactly what's being sung. And so it's important that the lyrical content is available to you so you really can understand what, what's being sung about. But what that does is it makes you have to contemplate it more. It makes you dig in a bit more as you're um, looking at the lyrical content. And this is very rich in lyrical content. Even as I was watching the lyric video, man, he's alluding to some great, great things. And so um, with that, I think what I want to do is just pull up the lyrics and let's talk about them a little bit here. Um, I'm going to pull back on that and let's pull up the first set of um, verses that I can um, get. Let me see too if I'm going to get them up on my screen better. Uh, easier for me to read. Okay, so he starts right out of the gate. Great and almighty, great king of all kings, your glory goes higher th than all that has wings. It's true what they say, that your love lasts forever. I bow down in fear at the thought of your might. Man, now that's packed with an awful lot. I'm going to get over here where I can see you guys and you can see me a little bit better. So uh, as I'm looking at this, I'm, wow. So he's starting, I mean, this is just like, it's, it's, it's pure praise. It's worship right out of the gate. Great and almighty Great king of all kings, your glory goes higher than all that had his wings. And so the idea that there's nothing higher than him, right? That he's infinitely great and almighty and the king of kings and his glory is higher than all things. I mean, this is just, this is a worship song right here. That's awesome. And, and then he, and I bow down in fear at the thought of your might. So, I mean, I'm getting, like, the, 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 the thoughts of, like, you know, the vision that you see even in Revelation, right, of the elders and the, and the angels, right, that are giving praise to God and, and worthy of all glory and majesty and dominion and power. And they're just, and they're bowing down before him and casting their crowns before him. You know, the, and then he says here, I love that he goes right in here, strength be found in my weakness because your spirit lives within me. So it, it, this is, uh, you know, reminding me and it, it should be reminding you of what Paul says, that his, his strength is made perfect in my weakness, right? So honor to you in the seat of perfection. So now I'm acknowledging God is perfect in all of his ways. God is holy and God is perfect. And, and I honor him and I'm, and I'm glorying in him and I'm worshiping him in that. And I ask, um, no, right, that, and so a strength is found in, in my weakness and your uh, in my weakness, why? Because your spirit lives within me. So it's his strength, his spirit that's living in me, right? Going into, I honor you in the seat of perfection. I ask that you mold me to be like you. So now here's, so here's the petition now. What, what am I asking of God? I want to be more like you. Not in, in that glory per se, but in character and who you are. I want to be more like you, God. Change my, change me right? You're in the seat of perfection. I'm a broken sinner. I'm asking that you mold me and make me more like you. That's awesome. And that's what we're made for, right? That's what we're told in, in Romans uh, chapter 8, that, we're, that he's, he's making me more like Christ. And that's the whole end point, is, is conformity to Christ, to be conformed um, by the renewing of my mind into the image of Jesus Christ. And then he says, he says, I, I love, this is where the vocals start to change and you have that, the melodic vocals that are set in juxtaposition. Refine me, redefine me, start in me a change of heart. And then he says, respine me, sanctify me, make me your sweet piece of art. Isn't that awesome? I love that. So refine me right? Refiner's fire. Redefine me. Who am I really in Christ? Start in me a change of heart. It's not, so there's the change at, at my redemption when I'm saved, but there's this ongoing thing called sanctification where there's a, you're starting the change of heart, but it's ongoing and my heart continues to be changed throughout my life. 
And I love, I've never heard this, but respine me, right? What's the spine? It's the thing that gives my whole body foundation. I love this picture. Give me a new spine. Give me a new foundation that everything is built on. A new foundation. Respine me. Sanctify me. And then he says, make me your sweet piece of art. And this makes me think of Ephesians when he says, for what? You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that were prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. But Paul tells us in Ephesians there, he says that we are God's sweet work of art. Did you know that being his workmanship, it is truly, and Chris uh, Dorman and I, and so what, did a podcast on this in our series on who am I? Who am I in Christ? That we are God's sweet work of art. And so this is beautiful. This is a beautiful picture that's being painted by these guys. So right out of that, he says, hold me closer. Let me feel the warmth of your arms. That's actually kind of reminiscent of one of the lines from the Megadeth song that we just uh, looked at and reacted to a couple weeks ago. So that whole idea of, let me feel the warmth of your arms, my despise, uh, my despise for all that keeps me from you is on fire. So my despise is on fire for what? I am so passionately despising what? All that keeps me from you. All the barriers to knowing you better. All the barriers to having a deeper and richer relationship with you. We were talking about this this morning in Sweet Fellowship with some others about what it means to really have a relationship with God and all the barriers um, to our relationship with Him and those things that are keeping us back. And... You know, so what he's saying is, I, I, I despise it and I have a passion to despise of those things because I, I want to be done with it. Now, let's be fair and let's be honest about that. There are things that we really do have a, a, a passionate um, despising of and there's other things that honestly we don't and are still barriers and, and there are self-protection where we're holding ourselves back from the Lord. And and those things are are, are, are can be a real challenge. Um, so uh, that is... That, that alone is amazing, but let's look at the rest of these lyrics. So then he goes on to say, he says, this is crazy. Okay. Entering light, I find reconstruction to be an unpleasant high. Your wings still shield me. Gold must be burnt to lose what keeps it from shining. So think about this, entering the light, right? So now I'm, I'm in the light and I'm in your presence, God, and I'm, in, and I'm saved and now I'm, I'm walking in this relationship with you. And then he says, he says, I find, so when I'm in that situation, I'm finding now that the reconstruction that you're doing, the rebuilding of me, the renewing of my mind, making me more like Christ, to be an unpleasant high. What a weird juxtaposition, right? It's a high and a low at the same time. It's painful and glorious at the t- same time. It's necessary and yet something I, I, I'm not liking and extremely unpleasant at the very least and maybe one of the more pain, most painful things I've ever been through at the very most. Because we're dealing with real brokenness and stuff that we're having to deal with in, in my heart. And so he says, he says, I find reconstruction to be an unpleasant high your wings still shield me in what process? In, in this process of refinement, gold must be burnt to lose what keeps it from shining, that refiner's fire, right? To take the dross. So in that process of refining gold, there's what they call dross, which is all the impurities. And as you heat it up, it comes to the top. And then the goldsmith then scrapes all, that, you know, all the impurities off, leaving the pure gold. And the more it's heated and the more it goes on in the fire, And the more the fire does its work, the more refined it becomes and the more pure the gold becomes. And that's what God's doing with us and that's that picture. But that's unpleasant because you're getting burnt. You're getting burnt. So then what does he say in the midst of all this? He says, praise be to you for your love and compassion. So think about that. So he's he's consuming all that um, is, is not good in my life, all that all that stuff, the sin and, 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 and all the consequences thereof and all the impurity in my mind. And he's taking all that from me. And that process is painful. It's an unpleasant high. And in the midst of that, then he says, but praise be to you for your love and compassion. So now I can say God is compassionate and a loving God even in the middle of the pain. That you take what's nothing and lift it up high. So you take me, who is nothing. Who am I that God is mindful of him or the... And, 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 you know, who are we that the Son of Man, you know, would, would care for us, that he would love us? And so he says, your skills of restoring are somewhat insane. 
how you fix what is broken to be uh, to you be the fame to you so it's all glory to him now him be the fame your skills of restoring are somewhat insane that and that's a little bit of an understatement i would say right they are insane it's crazy how he can do this and he restores us is how you fix what is broken he takes the the the, the those those crazy and and lowly things of the world to confound the wise and he takes our brokenness and he uses it for his good and all those things that we say well how could god possibly use me there's no way, like Moses, you know, look at, oh, I got a speech impediment, I got this, I got that, you can't, I can't do this, and he's, but I'm going to use you in your brokenness. I am going to use you, and I'm going to make you more like Christ in the midst of that, and mold you, and it's all fame to him. And then he says, strength be found in my weakness, because your spirit lives within me. So again, he goes back to that, that your spirit is in me, and my strength is made perfect, or your strength is made perfect in my weakness honor to you in the seat of perfection. I ask that you mold me to be like you. Refine me. Redefine me. Start it in me a change of heart. Respine me and sanctify me and make me your sweet piece of art. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that just awesome? So that, to me, look, we, we can wax on and on. I could talk for hours about everything that's being said in here. The message is very profound. Uh, very, very biblical, um, but really encouraging too. Acknowledging our brokenness, acknowledging the painful process that we call sanctification, and knowing that uh, God's not done with us yet, um, and He's He's creating in me a change of heart that doesn't stop um, this side of glory. That He's continuing to build um, upon that glory to glory. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that encouraging? I hope you guys are um, enjoying just even thinking about these words, these lyrics. I'm going to see if there's any comments you guys are making. So you guys are speechless. I'm not seeing a whole lot of comments down here right now. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Hey, share with me what your guys' thoughts are on the song, too. I mean, now that you know, we were live, so I want to hear from you. I want I certainly want to get your, your impressions and, and how this song might impact you. If for some of you, I think that this is a, a familiar band, and you may already know the song. Uh, if not, then hopefully you've been introduced to something that can really encourage your heart. You know, as I think about the words of this song, and then I think about it as well with my soul, you know, why is it well with my soul? Not because things are always great and not because things are uh, um, uh, going my way, but because I know God, there's a God who loves me that's behind all of it, doing his work in me and drawing me nearer to him. Oh, and I'm seeing Andreas. Uh, I'm so glad you could hop on. I know you guys are so busy and have a lot going on, so it means the world to me that you jumped on uh, to spend a little time with me today, man. I, 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 I am so, so happy, so tickled. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it, uh, on a lot of levels, you know, from the music to the words, to what God is using a band like this to do in the lives of, of his people, you know, and, uh, as much as, as people may not understand or identify with a particular genre of music, it goes both ways, right? I mean, I'm sure that us metalheads, we can sit back and go, I can't believe, you know, when I was a kid, we said, I can't believe somebody listens to Sandy Patty. Like what, who, who gets anything for that? But you know, people do. That's what's exciting about music is that God meets us where we're at and he takes those things that we love and he uses them for his own glory and does his really neat work of changing our heart. Many times using songs like these to really open our eyes to the word of God to see what God's doing in our lives. You know, what, man, and Andreas, honestly, can I tell you thank you uh, for introducing me to that song and suggesting it to me because it's, it's, it's been really fun. And, um, and I, I think God's going to use it. Uh, I, th- I th- you know, in, in an age where YouTube reaction to music videos are plentiful, I don't imagine there's too many people responding to ge- Grave Declaration, and so I'm glad that we had a chance to do that together. Uh, yeah, just taking it in, convicting, worshipful lyrics they are. I mean, it, 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 I love it because it's really, it's all biblical. These guys are obviously very founded in the Word of God. If, if all of their songs, or even half of their songs, do this, then... Uh, they quite possibly could be one of the, the most powerful bands in the genre because of, of how committed they are to the Word of God and letting that be their expression of worship. You know, 
Yeah, and now, again, now that you're on, um, uh, Andreas, you know what? Maybe you can definitively tell me, because I know you are a... If you guys don't know Andreas, he is an expert on, on this genre of music, because he also plays it, and he knows a lot of the guys, I think, in these bands as well. Is, tell me now, is this black metal? Death metal? Which one? I'm thinking it's black metal... Or unblack, as it's probably called in the Christian realm and community, unblack. But that genre of music, right? That kind of of metal. G clarify my thinking, man. G sanctify me in my thinking about the metal that I'm hearing. <laughs> oh man. Well, look, we're we're getting close to um, ending our time together. I, there's a little bit of a delay on what I'm doing here, but um, I'm excited about. Um, the future and what we, uh, the journey that we're on together. And it's all about worshiping God, staying tuned with the Spirit, and letting our, our soul sing His praises and, and God using um, His Word to well up in us um, uh, a desire to just sing His praises uh, together. So, with that, um, I hope you guys have a great, great. Oh, he's in symphon symphonic black metal. Okay, it just came through. All right. I, I like it. I love it. So even a, a subgenre within the subgenre, which would be symphonic black metal, because it does have a lot of symphony and, and, and melody uh, to it. It's not um, just a drive, but there's a lot more fluidity to it as well. So thanks for that, man. And thanks for the suggestion, Andreas. It's been awesome. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and God bless you.